share mine after you share from the teacher perspective. Okay. Okay. All right. So, oh, and by the way, since this is being recorded, I will um, email everyone the link to the recording later on. And if you want to have that, you know, to follow or, or review, I will also include that link in the follow-up email. So, okay, uh, Antonia, I will then let me share my screen. I'll show. I'll share with you all. Um, Jean Amato, right? Yes, Jean Amato. She teaches. I think it's a course on martial arts, cinema. And so let me show you what she did using Adobe Spark for her course, her cinema course. Uh, so here we go, right? So this, uh, so this right away encompasses the whole lecture. It has the title for that week. So in this particular week, they're covering the Shaw Brothers uh, and some fellow, ac some actors from the movies. And I guess uh, from here, she includes a lot of visuals. As you can see, is very rich on visuals. And it's very much a web page, right? So she created a web page. And so what um, what she did was this web page is built on Adobe Spark. And from Adobe Spark, she she is taking the embed code from Adobe Spark and then dropping that uh, embed code within her Blackboard course. And I can show you later on how to embed an Adobe Spark page or video or graphic into black into your Blackboard course. And so uh, I'm skipping one step here, which is, OK, the students will go into your Blackboard course. They'll scroll through. They'll find the Adobe Spark um, page, and they will click on it, and it will take them to this point here, right? And so this web page opens, and this is basically what your lectures are, right? What, what your slides will look like, right? And so here, and you notice the parallax effect. So you can see how this is scrolling, and it's kind of much more visually engaging, right? And this is a, like an upgrade from Blackboard, right? And so uh, it's like giving Blackboard a facelift, right? Because <laughs> it's a little bit much more mm -hmm. interactive, right? So here, here you can add text, right? Um, as I scroll down here, you can see a background image, right? And so you see, I, I'm, as I'm scrolling down, you're seeing this parallax effect on the left. There's text happening over here. These are all links that she has over here. Let me see what this one goes to. Shaw Brothers intro. It might be a video. With lots of blood. Right, so that's the video. Uh, what what um, what could have been done as opposed to having a video? This this that video could act, could have actually been placed right here and played directly from the website. Um, so next time I see Jean, I'll let her know. Put her videos inside the page. <laughs> um, I hope there's one video in here that does play within the page. But as you can see, right, as I'm scrolling down. It's, it's, it just looks much more visually engaging, right? You can see how uh, she's covering each topic along the way as, as you progress down the lecture. Oh, here we go. So here's a video that she did put uh, on the page. So if I were to, if I was a student in her course, and I would click on the, pay, on the play button, the video will, would play directly. Uh, Production scale is small from the from the page itself so if i wanted to go back i just clicked on the x and now i'm back here at the page um here's a broken link i'll let gene know about that one <laughs> um but as you can see right so as you're going down this might be one week uh one week of content or it could be a one lesson plan right for a two-hour class it can be included right here right now this will work asynchronously or synchronously, right? So if you were uh, presenting this to students in a remote setting, as you're teaching remotely, and you're sharing your screen, uh, you can then share your screen and lecture this way like this, as I'm doing as I'm scrolling down. But it can also be done asynchronously, where then students themselves go through the 
the material on their own. Any questions so far about uh, an Adobe Spark page will look like? No, any questions? Okay, good. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is how does an Adobe Spark page look like uh, from Blackboard, right? So I'm gonna log in to a course that I know that has Adobe Spark on their page. And this is a his an art history class. So I'm just gonna log in there real quick to show you how it looks like once the video, once the Spark pages are embedded into Blackboard. So this is another professor who is coming from the art history department. And she's also using Adobe Spark. And this is how it will look, right? You see, these are all Spark pages within the Blackboard system, right? So if I were to click on Unit 4, the High Renaissance, and I click on Read More, and so now this is taking the students into the actual Spark page. And, uh, and so like I said before, this is an art history uh, course, and you'll see again as I'm scrolling down how the professor has, in this case, designed this art history page for her students, right? And and since this is an online course, this is all asynchronous, so which means that the students are going to navigate to this content on their own. And as you can see here, there's some videos. Everything, is, the whole course uh, structure is is built in Adobe Spark, right? Now, if I were to go back out and um, go back into the Blackboard page. I just would click on the X, and now I'm back out into my Blackboard course right here. Okay, any questions so far of, of how this will look like in your course? No? All right, so Antonia, do you wanna show what you have, and then I will do a little section on how to create uh, your own, how, how easy it is to create your own page using Adobe Spark, and then I'll end real quickly showing uh, an assignment that I built, which is right here, um, using Adobe Spark for students. So I'm gonna stop sharing there, and then Antonio, if you want, you can share your, your Spark page, and then I will go through the steps on how to create your own Adobe Spark page. Okay, so thanks, thanks, Jose. That was great um, tour of how an instructor uses Spark to present content. Um, can you see my screen? Not yet. Let's see. I think I made you a presenter. Let me make sure. Yeah, I made you. Well, let's see, it's not sharing for some reason. I'm checking my Mac settings. Sure, sure. Antonio, as you're doing that, um, the I'm gonna talk a little bit about the assignment and let me mm -hmm. know when you're when you get to share. Yes, yeah, so so I have I might have to go jump out and jump back in again. So you so I'll be right back. Sure, sure. Uh, so as, Ant as Antonio joins the room, I, I will quickly show you uh, how to log into Adobe Spark. Uh, let me share my screen with you all. And like I said before, this is part of the Adobe suite. And so if if you're an FIT, uh, if you have an FIT email, you will have access to Adobe Spark as well as Adobe Photoshop and the whole Adobe suite. So to access Adobe Spark, it's a little different. You have to go to spark.adobe.com. And this is a tool that is on, um, it's online. You don't have to download the application. So everything is online. And, and there is also the Adobe Spark app, app that you can download onto your Android or iPhone. I think the iPhone 
is much more advanced than the uh, Android. And so there are, there are more features on the iOS, on the iPhone, than there is on the Android. Um, but I'm hoping that the Android will catch up soon. So once you get to spark.adobe.com, click Login with School Account, right? And so you click Login with School Account and type in your FIT email address and click Continue. And then they, they offer you two options, right? Personal account or company or school account. And so we're going to go with school account right here at the bottom, the second option. OK, and so then you will be asked to log in one more time. Uh, just keep in mind, on the second time you log in, just type in your first name, underscore, last name, your username, not the full email address, right? And then you will click Sign In. And that will take you to the landing page in Adobe Spark. Now, just like I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the presentation, it's th there's three prongs to Adobe Spark. We talked about video, we talked about pages, website pages, and we also talked about graphics, right? So these are the, your three options here. And so if you click on the blue circle with the plus sign at the top left-hand corner, you'll see there are a lot of options here. But you'll notice here's the web page, here's the video, and here's the, the graphics, right? So the graphics will be similar to Illustrator or Photoshop. Video is very similar to iMovie or Adobe Premiere. And the web page, very similar to Dreamweaver, right? So again, this is Adobe trying to make its products accessible to people who don't want to dedicate a lot of time to learning their more advanced tools. Right, so in this case, I'm going to go with the web page for now, just to show you how, how easy it is to build a page. Right, so we click web page. And while it's loading, uh, so basically here is the uh, web page. Uh, it's very much template, and that's the, that's the reason why these tools are so easy to use, because they're very template-based, and they don't, they don't offer you all the advanced uh, uh, features, but it will help you get the job done in no time, right? So let's say I'm teaching uh, this week's unit is going to be on, uh, let's say, George Washington, right? And so if I add a title, uh, call this unit one. Okay. So that's our title. And I want to add an image to our banner. And so Adobe Spark allows you to search for free photos under Pixabay. But you can also upload your own images, if you like, by choosing Upload Photo. You can, also, you can also use Adobe Stock, although our FIT license does not cover Adobe Stock. But there's also, also other uh, options here that how to import images. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and select free photos from Pixabay. And let's see if I can find some good photos of George Washington. All right, here we go. Here's a good one. Actually, I want I want one that's horizontal, right? And I hate using this one, but I have no choice. I don't have many options here. All right, so let's say that that would be our banner for that. Uh, everything within Adobe Spark uses the plus sign. All right, so anywhere you see a plus sign is somewhere where you can add content to your course. I can add an image. I can add text. I can add a button. A button basically will add links. You can add links, external links, outside, anywhere on the internet, on the web. Or you can add internal links to your Blackboard course. So for example, if you have a discussion board and you want to link it within your Spark page, you can do so by clicking on button and just give it a title and just pasting the link to the discussion or the external website here. Uh, so let me see if I can grab something from, uh, actually, let me just grab a link to an article on George Washington. Find something uh, real quick. 
let's let's use Wikipedia for now, just for uh, uh, just for interest of time. And I just go in here and let's say um, and I paste the link there. I click save. And there you go. So that's a link, right? And I can also move this if I want to center it to the center of the screen by clicking here, left justify, center, and right justify. And that brings it now to the center, right? So that was basically a link. Um, now, if I want to add a, if I want to make this interesting, um, and I want to add a video, or if I have my own lecture videos, I can click video. And now I can actually pull videos that I've created within Adobe Spark or YouTube or Vimeo, right? So remember I mentioned earlier that Adobe Spark is three-pronged, and one of those options is creating my own videos. And um, in this case, I'm just going to grab a video from YouTube just to keep it simple. All right, and let's grab, let's say this is pretty good right here. And again, this could be your own video or something that you pull from the internet or from LinkedIn Learning. Any of those would work fine. So I'm just going to copy the URL to the video, and then I just come, I bounce back into the Spark page and paste the video there. And now I have my video in there, right? So you see how the course is starting to build. And again, there's no code involved. There's no HTML, no HTML5, no Flash or anything. There's no fancy coding here. And so it's very, very straightforward. If I want to build a photo grid or a gallery, I can go here and select some photos that I might, you know, I might have of George Washington. Let's say I pick, uh, let's say I pick that. I pick this, a dollar bill, Mount Rushmore, and I click save. Now I just built my photo gallery, and that was very quick and easy, right? Notice that if I click on the image, oh, I got to preview it. But if I preview this, uh, the pictures open up in full screen, right? So if I click on this image, right? So it's like, it's like a gallery show, right? Like a slideshow, right? So if you have a course that's heavy on visuals, let's say you're teaching, I don't know, art history or or a course, any course that has a lot of images, this 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 type of uh, Adobe Spark lends itself to this type of uh, uh, visuals, right? Uh, so we did a photo, we did text. Oh no, we haven't done text. We did button, we done video, we did a photo grid. Now I want to show you a fancy way of storytelling, uh, which is called the glide show, right? So if I go with the glide show, and basically what the glide show does is it's it, it's a it's a way of tell stories visually, right? So if I have let's say let's say if I choose the Civil War, since I'm in I'm on the George Washington theme, and if I choose certain image in sequential order based on the story that I'm telling, um, I can tell the story with the images, right? So let's pick some of these images. And if I click Save, and if I'm scrolling down, I'm telling the story through the visuals, as you can see. All right? You see how the transitions are happening? This is like a, a Ken Burns effect, right? As I'm telling the Civil War story. Now, where now you're going to ask? Most people ask now, where do I put my text or my content? And so remember, everywhere you see the plus sign is a, an area where you can add content to your course. So if I want to add some text here, I can just click on the plus, click on text, and then I can start adding text here. And I can just go on and on and on by typing about the Civil War. I can also add a video as I am scrolling down, so students can watch a video on the Civil War. Okay, oops, uh, inappropriate for some users. There might be some violence in here, but that's okay. Let's share this video. Actually, let me play it first, make sure it works. Yeah. 
thought I was grabbing the Ken Burns movie, but it wasn't. It's okay. And so if I want to add the video, I click on the plus, click on video, paste the link, click save. Uh, of course, this video is age restricted. Let me, let me grab a different video. Hey, Jose, I have a question about videos. Sure. So is there a certain size limitation? Uh, no, there is no size limitation because because remember, uh, we're not uploading the file. We're just referencing the link to the video on YouTube. Because like if I were to make my own tutorial videos, which, right. I, which I've already done, mm -hmm. am I better off to like copy the link to the video here or or, you know, I don't know what the best, what's the best way to, to share videos? Yes, that's a great question. Great question. Right, so if you have your own videos and you're wondering how am I going to get my video on Adobe Spark, so the first thing is you got to keep in mind that the video has to be hosted somewhere, right? It has to live somewhere. It could be on YouTube. It could be Vimeo. Yeah, right now I've got a YouTube channel. So YouTube will be my first choice. Um, and now we also have Screencast-O-Matic, and so we're paying for Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, so we have several options now. And Screencast-O-Matic, since we're paying for it, we all get the pro account. And so if you're interested in getting a pro account with Screencast-O-Matic, let me know, shoot me an email, and I'll give you a pro account. Okay, because I haven't tried using it yet, and I wasn't sure, like, what... There's so many... I feel like there's so many options now where before you only had, like, one or two. Like, I don't know... Yeah. What's the best option? Like, what will be the easiest for students to download, access, um, store? You know, if I were to, uh, as technology moves forward, I don't want to have to remake all of these tutorial videos again, too. So, what's you know, what's going to stand the test of time? Yeah, no, that's a great point. Now, again, the the whole reason be behind using these tools again is to uh, not have to reinvent that wheel, right? Because now once you have your course up in Adobe Spark, and let's say I'm teaching this course in multiple sections, remember this course, this this web page that I just I just created is centralized, right, on the cloud, which what that means is that I can just grab this link, put it in as many courses as I want, and whenever I do make a change, let's say I change the title from this unit, this title, the change that I just made, if I change this now to the Civil War, this title is automatically affected, changes it in every of my sections, right? So again, we want to make things simpler for you, right? If you centralize your content in one place, and you're, I mean, if you're teaching the section, this in multiple sections, uh, if you centralize the content and you make edits, then it's like a ripple effect. It, all the changes are happening in all the sections of your courses in right. one time. Um, yeah. And there's, there's no downtime, right? There's no zero downtime because uh, until you make the change, the students are still seeing the old page, right? There's no downtime here. Right, right. And that's a great question, right? Because now, you're right, we have so many options now. We have, you know, for video, we have, you can use Vimeo, you can use YouTube. Google Drive, and now we have screen. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the other one? Camtasia, that's what I ended up using. Camtasia, yeah, Camtasia is great. I mean, it's very expensive. I think that's why we haven't bought it yet. We have, we can't afford it, but but we did purchase Screencast-O-Matic, right? So Screencast-O-Matic is exactly like Camtasia, uh, very similar in many ways. You can edit your videos in Screencast-O-Matic. Not only that, but it can host your video in our own Screencast-O-Matic server. So if you're interested in Screencast-O-Matic, let me know. I'll give you a license under okay. our FIT under okay. FIT account. Okay. And again, okay. yeah, and it's exactly what you're saying. You want to make sure that these videos are safe uh, and that you have access to them, so that if you do, you don't want to lose these videos because you know it's a lot of front-load work that you have to put into this. But, but once you've built your course and you have all this work, all this content available. You're just reusing the content, and in the long run, it saves you a lot of time of having to rebuild your course every semester. Okay, I think Antonio, are you back? I'm back. Okay, everything okay? You got it was working now. It was the um, system preferences did not allow Chrome to share. 
So okay. hopefully it'll work. If not, I'll just send you the link. Okay, okay. I'm gonna do one quick thing before Antonia takes over. And I let's say I'm as you see, I I built this kind of visually this kind of visual storytelling here as I'm moving to top to bottom on Civil War. And it it kind of takes the students to whatever it is you're teaching, kind of kind of brings them in with this kind of parallax effect of as you're scrolling and Again, you can add PDFs, you can add your PowerPoint slides, you can upload anything. Uh, you can link, sorry, not upload. You can link to your slides, PDFs, by using the button icon here. Um, and one last thing I wanna show before I pass it on to Antonia is that once I'm done and I'm happy with my presentation, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click share because I wanna show you how to bring this over to Blackboard, right? They added this new feature recently, which is if you want to send it to your own Google Drive, which is great because now you can archive it on your on your Google Drive, uh, just in case, you know, again, just to be, have always gotta have a plan B in case something happens, and then you can archive your content on your own Google Drive. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna publish and share the link, right? Because I want this to be available in my Blackboard course, so I'm gonna click publish and share the link. All right, and so I'm happy with this title and I'm just gonna go ahead and create the link. And by the way, this is where you would, uh, remember I talked about earlier about centralizing your material in one place so that if you are running this in multiple courses, and so if you do have a change, uh, later on this will say update. And so when you click on update, all, all the, all the Anywhere this course is is on anywhere this course is being taught, uh, the material will update automatically, so that you don't have to go into each of your sections of the course and update them individually. By clicking update, everything will get updated in one by one click of the button. All right, and so now I have a link, right? This is the link to my Adobe Spark page. But what I'm interested here is I'm going to embed the Spark page. So I'm gonna click embed. And this code right here, this is the code that I want to copy. All right, so I'm just gonna right click on that and copy it. And then I'm gonna jump back into my Blackboard course. And let me go into my sandbox. And I'm going to embed that Spark page into my Blackboard course. And so here is my course. And I'm gonna click on content, build content right here. Choose item, the first choice item. I'm gonna call this unit one, Civil War. And under here, under the WYSIWYG, or the text editor, I'll choose HTML, and then paste the embed code to my Spark page. Now, this could easily, I can easily done a link. So if you wanna choose embed, or if you just wanna to link to the page, either way works fine, All right? So as you can see, now I have my banner of George Washington. And so I can control when to open this unit, when to close the unit from right here. I can also attach files. If I wanna attach the PowerPoint slides to this, I can do so by clicking browse my computer. I'm gonna click submit and it should be at the bottom. And there is my first unit, right? And so students will click read more or they can click anywhere on the on this square and it will open in a new tab for them. And now they're in my unit one class. Okay, did everybody got, oh, by the way, uh, Adobe Spark will add all the attributions for you. You don't have to worry about attributions. As you can see in the bottom, all the images that I selected, the attribution has been added at the bottom for me. I didn't have to do anything for that. 
Okay, any question before we move on to Antonia? What about closed captioning? Yes, that's a great question, closed captioning, right? So remember that video that I added right here? And so if yeah. I click play. Hi, I'm John Green. This is Crash Course U.S. History, and today we come at last to the Civil War. So the, the that's why we prefer using YouTube, because YouTube does, uh, does auto-generate gener captions for you. And so it's up to the student if he or she needs captions to go and click on the captions button on, on their own. And that's right there. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic will do the same. Screencast-O-Matic will also auto-generate the captions for you. Okay, thanks. Great question. Okay, any other questions? And so now if I choose to exit the Spark page, I go back into my Blackboard page, and as you can see, now, now what we're doing here is basically instead of going vertical and adding each element one at a time like you do on Blackboard like this, all these small pieces are actually being dropped into one page on Adobe Spark. And that's how you're building your course, right? So if you had an icebreaker followed by a discussion, followed by a reading assignment, followed by a quiz, and so forth, right? What you're doing is you're building that learning sequence or uh, your your um, your lesson for that week or or that day, and you're just building it within the Adobe Spark page in a in a synchronous in a in a sequential order, right from top to bottom. Okay, and so we'll move on to Antonia. Jose, I have one question. Oh, sure. So, if somebody's viewing this, I mean, right now it's in Blackboard, so all the students would have access. But does anybody? Does it automatically open up Launch Spark? You know, if we were to somehow use this in something other than Blackboard and somebody wasn't logged into Spark, is there a problem with it or is it really universal that anybody would be able to open it? That's a great question. Yes, it's universal to anyone. So in, in that case, uh, let's say you're not using Blackboard, right? Uh, so then I will go into my Spark page. And remember when I when I went here and I generated a link? I would just take this, copy this link, and let's say I'm teaching on Zoom or I'm teaching on Collaborate. I can just go into the chat room, paste the link. Now, if you go ahead and click on that link, you should be able to open that lesson that we just created. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, that's a great question. I forgot to mention that. It's universal, so there is no login. Even if the student doesn't have an FIT account, you can use this for your professional use, or you know, or if you're presenting, um, Gina Motto, uh, who uh, whose course I showed before, this one right here, she actually uses uh, Spark to present. She doesn't even she doesn't even use PowerPoint anymore. Uh, in her presentation, like um, Antonia and I, we attended last uh, couple of years ago, right? Antonia, two years ago, she mm -hmm. used a Spark page to to present. Her, uh, for her presentation, she used Adobe Spark to present, right? Great question. Okay, Anton, any other questions before we move on? These are great questions. Can you add a voiceover onto your presentation? Oh yeah, of course. So again, uh, going back to we all, now we do have many choices for creating our own videos. So if you're using Screencast-O-Matic, or if you're using QuickTime, or if you're using any other tools to record yourself, you can record that uh, the that voiceover, the narration, and just drop it in here, anywhere in here, and your students will listen to your voice as you as they go through this uh, page. So yes, you can put your own uh, video. You don't have to be. It could be a talking head video of you speaking, or it could just be your voice with slides. Whatever it is that you want it to be, you can just drop it in here, uh, just like this. All right. So the student will click play. <laughs> That's a good one, drunken master. Uh, so right, the only downfall to that is that um, they actually have to, you know, there's no way to scroll as they're listening to your voice. Right. It, it has to be. It will have to open up, right, to whatever it is you're teaching them. 
right? So it could be a these could be micro uh, micro lessons that you can um, sprinkle them throughout the course or the page as you're scrolling down. And so now, if we're moving on to, you know, Jackie Chang, you might want to open up with Jackie Chang, you know, a little bit about Jackie Chang, right? And then the student will continue on. Oh, look at that, 36 chambers. <laughs> Antonia and I were just talking about uh, 36 chambers, right, Antonia? Yeah. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, Wu, Wu yeah. Tang. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Wu Tang Fang in the crowd. That's good. <laughs> um, so right. So then you would do these micro lessons, right? You will, you would record these micro lessons and then have the student proceed and go forward. You know, as, as you can tell, she's moving on to a new topic here, right? You can see how she's moving on. And again, she's using the Glide Show. See how you're using the Glide Show to tell the story. Okay, I want Antonia to uh, go ahead. I want to, I don't eat up too much time. So Antonia, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm getting excited here. I'll stop Can I sharing. ask a question? Sure. Um, a quick question. Um, is there a way to rearrange the presentation once you put everything into Spark? You know, if I want to put the movie to the end, is that possible? Sure, Antonia, you want to you want to? I think you you covered that, Antonia, right? No, but I can just answer that. Um, Thank you. you really, you really just would delete the one that you put at the top and then add it as as a new video at the bottom. So there's no like drag and drop or anything like that. But okay. it's pretty quick to just you know hit delete and then go and add the same video that you added at the top and just add it at the bottom. Okay. Thank but you. That goes for that goes for any element in Spark. So sorry for my connection issues before. Let's I, I should know better, right? Than to not be able to share my own screen. I guess it happens to It only me. happens when you're the one that's supposed to present. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so this should be working now, right? Yep. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly show you an example of how your students can present their content to you. Um, so this is a project that I was given in an actual course that I took on developmental psychology where we had to do a project that involved in um, sharing links to resources that we found on a topic of our choice. So I chose mindfulness and how it can help um, kids who have ADD. And um, so it's very kind of a simple version of what Jose just showed you because I didn't have to provide too many images, um, but it just made the presentation a little bit more dynamic than writing it out and s sending a PDF with embedded links. Um, so here, this is an example of adding text and it, within the text, you can add links. So they don't just have to be these type of links that we showed you before, which are called uh, buttons, right? You can actually embed them into the text itself. And here's a, a video that I embedded. And, you know, so it kind of breaks up the monotony of having so much text to read um, and show to other students if it's something that your students would be presenting to others or just sharing through a discussion post or something like that. Um, and that's the end. So I just wanted to give you an overview of it's not just for teachers, it can also be for students. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was that you can actually print these. So up in the share uh, the share menu item where Jose showed you how to grab the link, you can actually print it. And it creates a pretty nice print. This is better if you're not using video or links, of course, because those won't work in a PDF, but it creates a nice looking PDF. Um, so if you wanted, if you had like a handout you wanted to give to the students with text and images, it'll put your images in there. And of course, you know, the one that I created isn't very image heavy, but you can kind of get a sense of how that would work. And 
So yeah. if are there any questions about how a student might use it? Um, one thing is they they can go and they can grab a share link and you can create a discussion forum where they drop their links in and then the students can look at each other's spark pages that they've created um, that's one way that they can present to each other yeah I, I love that idea antonio of having it as a deliverable right so they can save it as a pdf and not only does uh, saving as a pdf um, maintains the links actually too so that's great so you can still click on the link as a pdf and go view the video that they included in the you know in that PDF. yeah that's true i i should have mentioned it does preserve if you are sharing the pdf um for them to view on their computers if they're printing it is kind of what i had in mind if right. you wanted to you know give print handouts in class um which i guess fewer and fewer people are doing overall, but if you did want to do that, it kind of creates a nice layout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so this is great. So so from a student's perspective, you can have your students, you know, go and build. Uh, I, I've seen several professors who are actually using it in this way, uh, where now the students are building their a whole portfolio on Adobe Spark. And along the way, not only are they putting, uh, using page, but they're using the video um, feature in, in Adobe Spark. And um, we do have a few minutes, and I don't know if anybody's interested in seeing the Adobe Spark video side to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Sure. OK. OK, I'll show you because. Is this going to replace VoiceThread? Because it seems like so much more robust. Well, remember, again, so to your point, right, in the first, you made a great point in the beginning, which was there's so many tools, yeah. and somehow we, they overlap. But there's one thing about VoiceThread that Adobe Spark does not do, and that is really the uh, being able to create discussions, video discussions, right? And so, if that's something that's important to you, you might want to lean over, lean onto VoiceThread for that kind of assignment. Whereas this is much more something that you, could, if you are thinking of it up as an assignment, it's more for students to instead of doing a paper assignment here, they can then build this page. You know, it could it could be a you know it could be a, a project or an essay, replacing an essay assignment where students are actually building this individually or as a group, and then they can also uh, create their own videos. Whereas VoiceThread, you're putting a prompt, and then they record their voices and then they discuss amongst themselves, and they actually listen to each other's voice. That's where VoiceThread is still unique. Uh, and, and we're not we're not kind of replicating that here with Adobe Spark. Okay. Uh, Thanks. In, in, in that sense, that's, that's a great that's a great point. So I'm going to share with you all real quick another assignment using Adobe Spark. And in this case, what we're doing here is uh, we're not using pages, but it, it could be using conjunction to what our, Antonia just showed you as a student's work. Um, but it can also be done as a separate thing where just students are just producing a video for you. And this type of assessment is called an authentic assessment, similar to VoiceThread, where they have to tell you what they know. And this is this could be like a presentation type, and where you can create an exhibit where everyone creates their own videos, and then there's a big exhibit, right? We all show each other's you know, videos or presentation or tell stories. All right, let me share my video, my screen real quick. Now I'll, I'll be brief. I'm not gonna go too deep into this one. And I'm going to show you an actual course that's running this assignment. And I'm going to go back into the art history course that I showed you earlier. And this assignment actually took off. I used to use it at Columbia, but the problem was that when I used to use it at Columbia, it, 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 it took me two hours to go into the classroom and teach the students iMovie. And it was too much time wasted on teaching the technology part. And I stopped using it. And so I stopped using it until I heard about Adobe Spark and how easy it is for students to pick it up and learn it. And then that's when I brought it back up and I replaced iMovie with Adobe Spark. Again, just to minimize the time that's spent on teaching them how to do the technology when I want them to focus on the subject matter. Okay, so this course is using it. 
it's an R history course. As you can see, it's also using the Adobe Spark pages. But what we did here is we, we, we replaced the final exam with this video project, right? And so we scaffolded the assignment into four parts, right? So in this case, part one is choose an artist or an architect, right? And so the students have to pick an artist. This is a Google Doc sheet that the students have to then submit their name and the artist that they chose. And then the professor has to review it and approve the artist or the architect that the student chose. That would be step one. You see how we, we broke it down? Okay, here's part one, part two. Part two here is I show the students how to, this, this, would, this would have been my two hour iMovie lecture. It's now broken down into seven minutes, I think, or eight minutes on how to use Adobe Spark. And I customize this video for this specific course itself. Right, so there's a quick eight minute video on how to use Adobe Spark. And this replaces two hours of teaching how to do iMovie, right? Then part three here, and this is where now the exhibit will happen, right? This is where the students will submit their videos. And in this case, I can also share these instructions with you if you're interested. Uh, we made we put these instructions in Google uh, in the Google Drive. So if you're in, if you are interested in these instructions, then please feel free to let me know, and I might include it in, in the email, the summary email that I will send you all today. Uh, but basically, simple things like duration. It should be more. It should be about four to five minutes long. Uh, you need to include 15 images on three to four works. You know, a very soft musical background is suggested. Pretend you're making a video for YouTube. Speak fluidly and audibly with a live intonation, right? So these are just some tips for the students or suggestions, right? And uh, in this case, she's using VoiceThread, but I started using Padlet to exhibit the videos. And for Padlet, it will look something like this, right? So for example, I think I have one here. In this case, uh, the Padlet could have all the students' names right? And then the student will come into this Padlet, click on the plus, right? And then they go into the Spark, grab the URL, and click on the link, and paste the link here. And that would be the work done. Takes a few seconds. Oh, here I'll give it a title. I'll call this Civil War Presentation. There you go. Look at that, right? So what you're doing here now is you are creating, you, using Padlet, you're creating an exhibition virtual board in your Blackboard course so that the student locates their name. And under their name, they're going to click on the plus, add the link, and paste the link inside there. Click Save. And now this is, a, this is now an exhibition so that the students can come into this Padlet, look at each other's work, and even comment on each other's work. So they can say, good job, or that kind of thing. And so now we're creating an exhibition that way. And this could be a video, Adobe Spark video. It could be a Spark page. It could be whatever, um, you, whatever it is. Now, the other good thing I like about this is that in a nutshell, you can see who did the work and who didn't do the work in one screenshot. You see everybody's work in one shot, all right? So here are all my students in alphabetical order. They just got to find their name, click on the plus, add the link, and now we have an exhibition, all right? Now, the last step that we added to this assignment was for the students to upload a transcript of the presentation. This is optional. You don't have to do this. But in this case, it would be just a, a Word doc of the paper version of their presentation, right? And so this, this was a Dropbox assignment here, where then the student will upload their work and their transcript to this um, Dropbox on Blackboard. And that's pretty much it. This is, this is how we scaffolded this assignment. Now, the reason why I showed this example is because in our history, they tend to do a lot of papers. And if, you know, that can easily 
eat up a lot of your grading time, right? If you're grading eight papers throughout the semester, you might want to change things up and you might want to do a video essay or video presentation, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, digital storytelling is another term for it. Um, video essays. Um, and, and real quick before I stop is that um, this could be told, this could be done in different ways. It could be actual storytelling from your students or it could be done factual like presentation type. And so it depends on what outcome you're looking for, this could be whatever it is that you want it to be, right? It could be storytelling. If you wanted to tell like docu type stories, uh, you know, like a documentary style, uh, storytelling could be done that way or regular type presentations. Um, and, 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 and that's about it. Uh, uh, and one quick thing before I stop is I want to show you where the Adobe Spark video can be found. Um, from right here, if you click on the plus and you click video, and if I give it a title, they give you a, they give you templates that you can choose from. If you want to do the hero's journey, this is a classic, you know, uh, journey, the hero's journey, right? If you want to pick that type of template show and tell, teach a lesson, uh, or just start from scratch, right? So now we're doing a video. So the students are preparing a video. This is very much like Adobe Spark page. And here you can watch a quick video tutorial. I'm going to skip that for now. But look at this. This is very easy to do. Uh, so here I do title and text. And if I call this Civil War by Jose Diaz, Oops. Right, and so these are all slides. And if I want to add more slides, I just click on the plus, and now I can add an image, or I can add my I can add my videos here, or upload my MP4 or MOV files to Adobe Spark Video. I can add images again, like I did before. Find free photos, Civil War. I'm going to stop here real quick. And if I want to uh, record over the slide, I hold on the record button. All right. So if I go here, hello, everyone, and welcome to my Civil War and Reconstruction presentation. Here you can see the North is fighting with the South, et cetera. And once I'm done with the video, I can just click, uh, I can download the MP4 file. Um, I can, you know, I can change the templates, the themes. I can change the, uh, 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 the transitions, the fonts, and the colors from right here, right? It's a simple, remember I said it was very template based. And once I'm ready, I click share. I publish, create the link, and now I have a video that I can now take this video and put in my Spark page. Or this could be a student's uh, deliverable, right? This could be the student's presentation for your final, um, for the final paper of the, or the, you know, the final paper of the class. Um, it's almost done. Creating a link. Thanks, Jose. I have to run, but I'll sure. talk to you. Okay. Sure. Thank you, and thank you for coming by. Right. So uh, again, let us know if you want uh, a copy of Screencast-O-Matic. Adobe Spark is included already. Just use your FIT email. Okay. Well, thank you. Sure. Thanks. All right. I'll stop there. Sorry, I ran right at the last minute. Yep. <laughs> Any questions, anybody? Or on using Adobe Spark, Adobe Spark page, and all the cool stuff that we did today? I'm good. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Thank you, Thank you Kristen. Thank you for coming by. I think it's really exciting. I didn't know about it and um, how the students can put their own movies together. I think it's really oh, yeah. great. So I'm really excited. I thank both of you guys very much.
Sure, sure not. Thank you for coming by. Thank you, Antonia, for showing us your, so we got to see from the student's perspective, which is always important, right? Mm -hmm. So, but again, very easy to use, straightforward. I never even offer, I mean, other than the uh, tutorial, that's the only really instructions that I, that we do give out, but students really pick it up easy, you know, from there. So let us know how, it, you know, if you do decide to use it, let us know how it works for you. And we'll love to have you back and maybe show some other students, uh, show other uh, workshops on how you use yours. Okay, definitely. Sure. I wish I knew about it earlier. It's like, I just saw your email and I'm like, let me join in on this class. So I'm really grateful and really thankful to both of you and your time. Because awesome. I was coming you know, to all your classes in the summer. <laughs> this, yeah. this is something we might want to add next time, Jose, is the graphic part because I know you mentioned it, but um, that's that's really cool. The I'll, I'll just tell you really quickly, um, Joni, that that there's an ability to create like a graphic. It's really quick, really easy, and you can embed it into an email to students. So I had a teacher use that, and it really stood out in my inbox, and it you know it really caught my attention. You know, in a sea of just text, to see like a really pretty image there that said, you know, reminder, your test is next week here's the study guide, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's, that's another thing that, you know, maybe we, maybe we can create a new workshop that encompasses all three, Jose. That's um, true. I mean, it's, it's like even there's the, just so much you can do, but we don't want to <laughs> overwhelm everybody in one go, but. I know. I know. Like today we covered the two, the two, you know, the video and the page and I'm like, I'm already running over, you know, running over. It's so much to cover, but yeah, you're right. We've never done a, a, the graphics on the graphics uh, workshop. So that would be a good idea, Antonio. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do one on just graphics alone so that we, you know, just create our own graphics. Um, but yeah. So, all right. Um, I'll start with, announcements. They can 